Alright guys, um, we decided to add yet another addendum to the codec, uh, org mode codec work. Um, the main thing we're trying to play around with is, uh, we're just trying to see, um, actually what happened here, uh, let me just re get my flight check back up, um, we are in the code area, okay, cool, um, so the main thing we're trying to see at the moment is, I just want to do a quick experiment. Um, one of the stories we have is around adding support for tables to um, um, represent org mode um, here we are, drawers. So the, the basic idea is this. Um, at present, so if you look at a typical diagram like this one, at present um, these diagrams don't render particularly well. They render like uh, the properties are coming through as uh, some kind of weird uh, amalgamated string. Um, and we just thought actually that it may make sense, even from a maintenance perspective, it may make more sense to create tables rather than properties. Uh, f mainly because they render better, to be honest, but uh, also because the documents may be easy to maintain with tables. So if I take the rendering of the table as an example, uh, I'm not quite sure how far down here it would be. Perhaps we have to search. Uh, linear searches don't seem to work terribly well. Uh, so if I search for this story, okay, we are. Um, Ah, interesting. Okay, so what happens then is when you create a table, if you put the table in a in a section, in a name section, it seems like the rendering engine they got in org mode uh, doesn't actually render the table anymore. Presumably we'd have to take it out of the section in order for it to render, which is a bit of a shame. Um... Yeah, that is actually a bit of a shame because we don't really we want to be able to identify the section, and it's very convenient that we already have these greater blocks, named blocks and so on, and we could just uh, create one for Dogen. But however, if you do that, then the parser seems to get a little bit upset and just ignores it altogether. Which is a bit of a shame. As you can see here, there's a table uh, rendered nicely. And that seems a lot better than um, the existing approach. Um, I mean, there's nothing stopping us from saying that. Um, so, if we take this as an example, we could have a not a, a named block, but an, an, an unnamed block, and uh, and just look for the table, I guess. Um, Let's have a look at the model. So the um, question then would be, how do you determine um, the table? Um, well, it seems to me we could just do, a, I mean, this is all a bit of a hack, but we could just search for, s for, for this structure. Um, and then keep going until we find a pipe space until the end of the pipe spaces I guess and then we extract all of that out of the comment so this would be something we do in our own uh, codec so this this is doable I think this is doable we will we need to experiment a little bit but uh, I think this is doable so we'll just uh, give it a go and see what happens. Uh, the first thing we need to do of course is we need to be able to, uh, to round trip org mode diagrams though. So uh, perhaps we should really not uh, clock on this story and let's look for the round trip story because uh, we can't really be manually changing uh, these org mode diagrams, it's just too painful and we can't really bootstrap them anymore from uh, from Daya because they've moved and it's becoming increasingly more and more difficult to uh, get them in sync. So. 
what we'll need to do is um, we we'll need to see what happens if we try to round trip it may even work, I don't know um, so let's just have a quick look so the first thing we will do for round tripping is we'll just add a target for it um, I, in fact since the last uh, video we've changed the structure of Dogen models so, uh, well, not Dogen models, but Dogen projects, I guess. Uh, so that there's a modeling directory now that contains the model. And in here we have the targets now. So um, there will be a convert target here already. Uh, and what we need to do is to create uh, a convert, sort of an identity convert, I guess. So uh, we don't really need. I guess we do need output directory. Uh, so source and destination are basically the same. And that is it, I think. And so if we just have a convert all org. And so uh, I may sound a bit weird to have a target that converts from itself, but um, it's actually going to be very useful because every time we want to add a new feature now uh, we can update the uh, convert all org and convert all org so the idea then will be that um, if you want to add something like for example tables instead of uh, manually going through every single um, model we can just um, get the updater basically the old world and the new world and it will generate the, the, the models with, with the update um, now we don't really know what that's going to do uh, but uh, we'll give it a go let's make sure that we are uh, working from a clean slate make sure the code generate is up to date and then let's see what happens if we try to convert all org ok so as you can see it's converted org to org now what happens Okay, so that's actually not too bad. I was expecting it to be much more disastrous than this. It seems that the only problem is we seem to have added white spaces where there was already a white space, so perhaps we just need to do a very small change to the code generator. Not to add white spaces if there's already a white space. Um, it's interesting that there is a white space. Oh, I, th I think the reason why there is a white space is because we're not going to the trimming. Um, that is why. I wonder if we should just trim on entry. So at the moment, trimming is actually... Um, if we look for the logical model... Actually, one thing that would be really useful is to have some kind of indication of the title of the model what you think uh, so let's just add a story here add model name to as title and plant UML diagram. So at present it's not possible to know the name of the model by looking at the SVG. You should have a comment with the title um it, it could be added to the existing model level comments with documentation okay so something really simple we'll get to that in a second right now what i was saying was if we go to um the physical model the logical model should i say Right, this looks like the logical model. Uh, we're doing some experiments at the moment, so uh, this that put in plenty of ML is a bit all over the place. But um, so the logical model, trying to add commentary to it, uh, which changes the shape of the model quite a bit. 
So in the logical model, as I was saying, um, if you look at the transforms, so these are all types. Okay, there are the transforms. So what we've done is we we added. Yeah, uh, this is not quite as readable as it was before without the relationships. This is not something else we need to add. So it does the documentation transform, which is part of the chain. Uh, I think the pre-assembly chain. Um, and what the documentation transform does is it trims code, it trims the um, comments. Now, not entirely sure why, but we decided not to do those trims in the codec model. But the more we think about it, the more it would make sense for the trimming to be a transform in the codec model which would also address our problem um, I think that's what we're going to do so if we just go here to the codec model and let's just have a quick look uh, there we are recording we are recording Let's just have a quick look at the codec model's transforms. And um, so this is the model to model chain, which calls a file to artifact transform, artifact to model chain. So I assume that around here maybe a coffee I think. Um Yeah, so this artifact model transform at present all it does is resolves to the actual codec. And it doesn't seem to do anything else. Um You know that model to the top level chain. This is really where um, a graphical view would help. Um, sadly, our plenty of view is not quite good enough. Artifact to model chain. Oh, okay, there we are. So the model production set. So this this guy here. Okay, so what this guy does then is it probably does a transform to read. This is just to grab all the directories that we need. But this is not ideal that we're doing this here. Although having said that, we don't really read references for the other transforms, so we just read a codec model and then we... Uh, we Right, okay, so what I'm actually interested in is this model production chain. So, it's interesting in the model to model we're not actually bothering with the model production chain now that is a bit worrying I think because you can see we do a lot of transforms here so what do we do here so we do an artifact to model and then we do a lot of transforms I think none of these transforms really matter when we're converting from model to model, to be honest. Uh, however, the problem of course comes when we try to introduce a new transform here, 
which is going to start trimming the spaces and uh, that is actually relevant so perhaps um, I'm not I'm a bit hesitant to add it to the artifact to model chain because um, I mean artifact to model is actually reading the artifact and converting it to a model uh, Right, a bit of chaos downstairs as well. Do this in the pause for a second. Right, okay, so uh, my final conclusion on this is that we are we're not going to change the artifact the model change chain, uh, but we are going to add another transform that has to be called separately from two different places. Um, I mean, I wouldn't want to lie too much. I mean, artifact the model should really be read an artifact and convert it to a model. If there's any further post processing, it should, I don't think it would be a good idea to start adding to that. Uh, it will make it a little bit opaque. Um, we could add that to model to model chain as you think. Um, and then we could just add that here as well. So what we'll do then is as our first um, salvo in this uh, work we're just going to go to the codec model and we're going to add the new transform here. Now we called it documentation transform before, but this time we're going to call it something else. We're going to call it. Uh, in fact, let's just make sure we're clocking the right stories now because uh, I think this really is a story of its own. So let's say move uh, documentation transform to codec model. Um, we initially added the documentation transform to the logical model uh, but there is no particular reason for that um, and in addition we already have multiple types making the transform much more complicated. Try instead to perform the trimming in the codec model. Also um, name the transform more uh, appropriately. Never like the fact that we call it documentation transform because I mean, it's not just a gene it's not a generic documentation transform, really. If you think about it, it's a documentation trimming transform, really. So it's probably best if we just name after that. So uh, what we'll do then is we will we'll just jump over to the models, and in here we'll just add a transform. Just have to remember to do um, insert. good and what we'll call this guy is we'll say uh, documentation trimming transform right, so this transform here um, keep forgetting that the targets have changed names um, this transform will um, Let's just have a look at what we generated. Uh, so nothing major here. Uh, let's get rid of the dogen changes. And if we just say, uh, actually it compiles in the test pass. While we wait. Um, so codec generate documentation trimming transform. Um, should this will pass? It did. And then here we could say um, do no, CMake add target to the gen no, add, add uh, org to org conversion 
target to the gen project. Okay, cool. Um, and now then, now we're gonna do this documentation transform. Well, let's first open up the, the, the real documentation transform. Um, as you can see, or as you will see, it's a very trivial transform. But uh, it does involve a lot of dispatching all over the place here. Um, ah, interestingly enough, there was, as always, there's always a special case. Um, we need to be aware of the generation marker. There was one hack. Everything else is just a regular trim. Um, except for the generation marker. So I think this will just require a little bit of hackery. So, um, I mean not a lot, but just a little bit. Um, So what we'll do is we'll just, um, well, let's just start off by um, doing the basics on the transform. We still don't have a defaulting. That would make our life much easier, but uh, if we take something like the metadata transform, it would be nice to just default to uh, all the things that we need in a transform. Um, and it's actually quite a trivial thing to do, but... As always, it's not enough hours in the day. Right, so... Uh, our transform will simply take a context and... It will... Um, so let's put a comment here then. Um, removes any uh, leading and trailing white space from all the comments. Excuse me. <coughs> from all the comments, all the documentation. Okay, doc. So that is the guy, and we will need something like a um, bull is generation marker and then it could just be const um, entities elements by reference e this is just a static okay and this is just a uh, well oops returns true if the element is a stereotype Of generation marker. Okay, right. So I think with these two functions, we probably can do most of the work. Not entirely sure why we didn't do this in the first place. To be honest, seems quite obvious on hindsight. Um, but that's the thing about uh, first first approaches and quick approaches is that you just try to do something quickly, so you don't really spend the necessary time to uh, what have we done here. Sometimes LSP in his uh, attempts of helping actually makes life harder. Uh, if you're not paying attention to what LSP, LSP is saying. Let's see, let's just happen again. Um, right, so then. Um, what we really want to do around here now is to say, well, we need some kind of logging, tracing. Model IO, a context, just the usual. Very basic transform, really. Um, And then we can just hook it up. Um, and to be honest, I think we might even need all of these guys here because it's going to be rather similar uh, to um, the previous transform. 
Right, so something like this. And then uh, is generation marker will just basically um, let's just update the comment here. So um in fact if we now quickly go up to the method the, the documentation transform and here you can just obtain a couple of simple includes. Oh actually I might add another method because it seems to me We need to trim. So let's just create a uh, performs uh, left right trim of the string static. Okay. So now then, I think we have everything we need. So the good news really was that the round tripping was vaguely working. The bad news is that we ended up having to uh, do all this transform work that we didn't really expect. So uh, I guess that's what programming is all about. Um, now then, let's think about this. If we just create a const string generation marker stereotype. That would just say something like, um, well, actually, good question. What would it say? Um, we are a bit lost at present because everything has changed recently. Um, in fact, maybe for this, we could go back to Dia for a second because I suspect, especially because we still have Frozen somewhere. to frozen perhaps um, now where would this be uh, share mm. maybe we should go to the reference implementation I think uh, these things are moving a bit too much uh, brain can't quite remember So around here somewhere there will be a models that are up here. And in here we should have perhaps a profile maybe. Right here we are. So that's what we need. Okay, so now then all we need to do is to say something like uh bool are false for e const auto I reference tagged value on e dot tagged values. Um, and then if tv dot tag equals equals generation marker stereotype return true return false. Okay, so something absolutely... Oh, actually, to be honest, that isn't even quite right. Um, we probably need something more like generation marker and then stereo types tag generation marker value, something like this. So if I just go to a model and I look for a stereotype, here we are. So we need something like this. This will be the key. So we are literally just trying to locate uh, the stereotypes tag and so if you find the stereotypes tag then we could say if 
Well, we could probably this contains now uh, TV dot value presumably. Okay, so <coughs> something quite simple. Uh, if we have a stereotype uh, with that value, we return true, otherwise we return false. Um, not exactly the fastest thing in the world, or the most beautiful, but uh, I should do the trick. And then we could say, um, let's just look at the hack we did for generation for this particular case. Uh, well, it's not huge amounts, we just need to do this work. So. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll say const auto is generation marker or or even better if is generation marker e uh, so I think in all cases we want to trim and that's going to be Ah, okay, we probably need another method, to be honest, uh, because we need to extract the documentation. We need to send it to our trim method. And then we need to put it back. So, um, uh, what should we do? So, e dot documentation or comments. That's the comment dot documentation, right? So that's gonna trim. Then we had slotted back. Um, so I think what we really need is a method that takes a commentable. Let's look at the. Uh, we don't really have this in Dia, so let's look at the concepts we have here. We are recording. Yeah. So, uh, where are we? Somewhere around here. Right, so uh, on our types, we would have commentable as a concept, something which has a comment. So, if we just create a function here, inline, uh, well I think it's probably templates, type name commentable um, I don't know what the name of the function is going to be but we will receive a commentable um, by reference perhaps C and then what can we do with the commentable we could say uh, C dot um, something like this. Right, so that gives us the comment. Now it would be nice if this was actually part of the class, because if it was, then we could access the trim. Um, let's just... Uh, add it here. Something like... Um, dot comment dot documentation so we could call this the original and we don't really need to make a copy of this but there you are and then we could call it the trimmed the trim of the original and we could just set it back I mean, uh, this is not exactly the most efficient way of doing this but you get the gist of it we keep saying that, I'm afraid, but uh, so uh, trim. Uh, we probably should return void. Uh, sorry, chaos going on here. Traditional chaos and havoc going on here. Um, so we were trying to create some very simple templates function here. Uh, Uh, object type or whatever. 
so this guy will just call trim on the commentable. Now we want to make sure we're not going to confuse trim string with trim commentable. I think it's okay. I mean, this is not exactly the most brilliant API, but um, so now that we can now we can trim a commentable that way, we could basically just say trim. Uh, perhaps we need to make this static. Actually, um, what does it mean to have a static template function? I think it's fine, right? It will be just a, a regular function. So let's have a look. Okay. Right, so if we just get rid of the previous incarnation of that. Now, so that does the trim. And then we could copy the hackery around here. We will need the uh, string stream, so that's an SS stream. So let's have a look then. So if we put SS stream here. Um, Ah, interesting. So this is a message, whatever that is. So we've already done the trim here. So let's think about this for a second. What do we want to do? We want to obtain the documentation. We could have a boolean flag here that basically says um, if you require an end of line, we'll just add it for you. Yeah, that probably is the best thing to do. Um, I don't know why we're including XML. Uh, add terminating new line. So uh, add terminating new line, mm, not the best of names. Uh, add trailing new line, perhaps. Now, of course, it's going to be painful to have to do uh, add trailing new line every time. So perhaps we'll violate our principles and add this guy here. Set it to false, and then we could just say. Add trailing new line. Create a stream, put the trims in the stream. Add a new line, and then we could just slot back. the results here. So that will be something like um, os.str uh, else well there's not a lot to do else so we just uh, do what needs doing. Okay so in here what we now no need to do is to say please get me the stream back and Oh, there we go. So something like this, right? So we obtain the original, whatever that is. We um, trim it. I mean, I guess you probably will say that this doesn't add a lot of value. So perhaps you could just say trim. And if we need to add a trailing new line, we will just uh, add a trailing new line there. Okay. And now what we need to do is... Uh, if you are a generation marker, we could say um, const auto add trailing new line is generation marker. And then this guy could just go in here. And now what we're saying then is 
if you are you need to add trailing in line if you are a generation marker then we trim with this guy which to be fair yeah that looks about right and then uh, for the attributes similarly we can just do a trim after I think that's that okay so this looks fairly straightforward fairly innocuous and more or less equivalent to all this stuff that we had here um, it's just because at this point we already dispatched into types and these types have got different structures so much more complicated whereas here we don't really we just have this blank notion of elements so makes it much life much easier so let's just first try to run this thing make sure it doesn't break anything now we can actually run both of these transforms at the same time I think um, probably for good measure I'm going to remove the previous one so um, so the documentation transform is probably a pre-assembly transform okay so what we'll do is we'll just get rid of it so it must execute it before the variability transform so I think that's the only dependency we have on it and then what we'll do is we'll go back to our documentation trimming transform and then we will add it in two places so the the model production chain as you think it's getting a bit warm here uh, so the model production chain which will be just after we read the model something like this uh, trim all the white uh, and necessary white space and then we will also uh, actually what's going on here okay that looks better and then hopefully well, first thing is, what happens if you run all tests with this? Because this is where one would expect, if there's a difference between in behavior between the two transforms, one would expect a uh, test to break now. <laughs> if they don't break, it's a good news. Okay. Oh, most interesting. Most interesting. Um, I think I'm not sure what we've done here, but the um, transform doesn't seem to be kicking in. So, um, what is going on? Interesting. This should really have done something. So we're trimming left and right. Oh, interesting as well. We are uh, okay. Right. This is not a very clever way of doing this. So we're passing this string by reference. Right, um, I'm not entirely sure what this method is doing, but it's not doing anything sensible. Um, I should pass it by as a copy of the string. I'm not sure what uh, happened there, but that wasn't a very good idea. So we're obtaining the string from the commentable.
Okay, that didn't solve the problem, but that was definitely not a good idea, I don't think. Um, well yeah, it's as if we're not really trimming that much. Um, okay, this should not really be that complicated, really. What are we doing wrong? Uh, First let's just look at the diff, just in case you think something very silly we haven't even noticed. So the documentation trim and transform, that's just our first attempt at doing this. Then the model production chain, we added and we removed it from here. The method they transform, there's almost nothing there. So okay, all of those changes look good. Um, I think we are just not doing the right thing at the moment. Um, so we should be trimming. The elements are not const. Well, we really thought the compiler would help us there, but... Um, so we detect whether they are a generation marker or not. I mean, I can imagine there may be problems with that. Um, but let's just assume that's not the case for now. Uh, I certainly wouldn't expect problems everywhere. Um. I wonder if... well, first, first and foremost, I guess we should just try to um, add some logging here, because but I wonder if there's something not quite right with the way we've created this um, method here. Uh, it must be something very trivial. Okay, we definitely passed the comment of our reference. Then we took a copy of the comment. Ah, okay, sorry, to be honest. Uh, sorry, sorry. I, I think that was fine, actually. I mean, it just seems a bit silly that we are supplying this by reference. And then return. I mean, this method is a bit strange. Um, but none of the things should really affect it. But so let's just say we. And if we are trimming in place, then it doesn't seem like we need to return anything, does it? So. Uh, so let's say we do that, and then uh, if you look at the templated method. Now this is where we want to make sure we're not kind of. So this guy is a commentable. Um, with a trailing new line. To be honest, I'm just to make sure, absolutely sure that these methods are not going to get confused. I'm just going to... Um, uh, sorry, I meant... Um, I'm just gonna. I mean, this is just uh, being really cautious, but I don't really like when there's overloading. And you don't really know what's going on. Right. Okay. Cool. Now we just have to fix uh, trimmed. Right. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna say, uh, let's make a copy of. Yeah. Let's just go back to the other way this was. So const uh, auto original. Okay. And we just take that guy and then trim the original. Well, to be honest, we now can just call this S the string. We can trim it. And then we could do what needs to be done. I mean, uh, we're just getting a little bit confusing ourselves slightly, but it's just, just important to make sure this code does look vaguely sensible. Um, that actually looked vaguely sensible. Uh, compiler is not happy though. Hmm. 
Hmm. Must have a So presumably documentation is just a string, right? Ah, of course you can't tell. Um, it's a template parameter, so trim of s. Interesting. That should have worked. Uh, Imagine this documentation being anything else other than a string, which of course it is. So, not entirely sure why. Um, can't find our trim function. Ah, because we're a bit silly. Right, there we are. Okay, so what are we trying to say here? We're basically trying to say we're getting the documentation, we're trimming it, and then we're putting it back. Uh, this is really not the complicated part of the work we're trying to do here. Sadly. Um, right, okay, so we're back to where we were. So um, now let's just try to understand why it is that the trimming is not working. Um, the most likely thing is that we just put it in the wrong place here. So. Uh, Trim all the necessary white space. Okay, so what we'll do now is, uh, given that we can't really figure out why this is breaking, we will just very quickly. Oh, actually, before we do anything else, see if there's a pattern of failures. No, it seems to be pretty much across the board. So uh, we just have to find one test. It's interesting that here. Okay, this is definitely a generation marker sort of issue. But here, that's not a generation marker sort of issue. So if we just open up any of these tests, and I will just, uh, I'm just going to go for Doge. And if we just add some debugging here. So, let's double check that we are seeing this thing coming through. Alright, so this guy will be the guy. We can just grab for uh, trimming. Uh huh. Oops, Dogen org, Dogen physical. What model did we change? Physical. Right, so that wasn't there before, it is there now. You can see we are trimming, apparently. So that's good news. Um, so now we just have to uh, add more logging to understand what's going on here. So um, let's grab. Should really have a template. Uh, yes, we put template for logging, but uh, we don't. So. Uh, Processing is that name. And then we could say here add trailing mm, line. Just uh, sprinkle a little bit of logging just to get us an idea of what this thing's doing. And good measure was just processed the attribute too. Yeah, 
Okay. Nothing particularly special just yet. Uh, so let's just get the names out. This will give us a feel for what the transform is doing. Uh, if we could get there. Right, eventually we'll get there. Um, so we're just trying to understand whether the trimming is streaming or not. Um, if it is streaming, it's a bit peculiar. I uh, just have to keep an eye on the phone. Okay, stuff is happening. Nothing major. Right, so uh, let's say we grab the trimming again. We log view mode it. But now, as you can see here, um, okay, seems like this is kind of doing what we want it to do. Processing a lot of stuff, lots of trimming going on. Right, so. Um, what we'll now do is, just for good measure... Uh, ah, we can't log from... Um, sadly, we can't actually log from a template. It's just... Um, it becomes a little bit complicated. Okay, fine. Uh, I never really like this method as a template anyway, so... Um, let's just change this slightly. Static void trim. So what we'll do instead is, we'll just take a comment um, I will just say something like um, entities comments by reference C. Dreams get comments. But then now what we'll do is uh, we'll just re-implement this method this time as a regular method instead of a template. Uh, we did forget something, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We forgot to add the boolean. This is sad that we uh, end up spending so much time faffing around with things like this because it's not really wha where the value is. Um, but I guess that's the life of a programmer. Right, so now, uh, what we'll do now is we'll say, well, give us the comment get the documentation we'll update the documentation right so and these guys here will just be trim e dot documentation oh uh, the comment should I say okay now, we should be able to do a bit of logging. I mean, we'll just put something at trace here. Uh, before trimming. This is uh, almost a which we'll call it um, we're double checking obvious behavior we must have made a, a very silly mistake somewhere uh, but sadly the only way to find out now is going to be a lot of hackery really we must have done some absolutely trivial mistake uh, this should have worked Uh, which means that we uh, we must have missed something, something very obvious. Um, the behavior of the test at the moment implies that there's no trimming happening, uh, which is very strange. Oh, here we go. A uh, lot of empty strings. Okay. Very 
interesting. Uh, am I going crazy here? Because this does not make any sense. Well, actually, before anything else, we probably should just do a. Uh, don't bother. Sort of no up, so um, it's uh, sensible. Still, um, interesting that you see things such as ah, okay, this is the grab that's actually causing us the problems. Okay, so uh, we just got a little bit carried away there. Let's just wait for this to finish. Right, so if I now look for the documentation, trimming. I mean, grab is useful, but uh, because it doesn't uh, copy all the lines around it. Here we are. So, as the documentation trimming. Okay, as you can see here, this is actually looking very, very sensible. Uh, so let's start the transform there. Processing main. Documentation is empty, nothing to do. Ah, in fact, just, I mean, this is being a bit of a exaggerated. Um, and we probably don't even have to bother with anything. If the documentation is empty, we don't need to know if whether we need to add trailing new line or not. So. Uh, Perhaps what we should do is we should just check. Yeah, I think what we're going to do here is we're just going to have a. Let's see. A process uh, supply element. Let's just change this slightly. We'll have a static void process element. This will have uh, entities elements by reference e. The idea being that um, we can just um, just make it a little bit more sensible. Right. So we process the element, and then before we do any of this, is we could just say if e dot comments dot documentation dot empty. So if if it's not empty we could um so if the documentation is not empty we could do all of that and then we can yeah, so now, now this looks a little bit more sensible. I mean, y you can see we're kind of going around uh, skirting around the actual problem. Uh, but sometimes I think... Are we on Portuguese keyboard by any chance? Sometimes I think it's easier to see the code in the way you imagine it to be even before you start fixing the bug. Because otherwise... Um, I find I find it harder when when the code is in a sort of a messy way. It's harder to think about where the problem is. Um, so I always have the tendency to clean up the code a little bit so I can think about the problem. Now then, uh, we return to our log. Um, so. Right, as you can see, um, we start the transform. Uh, interesting that we now are not logging at all. OK. 
Okay. So I'm not gonna bother with this log here. I think by the time we got here we don't really need it. Uh, but we do need it here. Um, which will probably trigger it. Yes, it puts there. Right, that I think and um, probably something slightly more meaningful. Right, so the element documentation is empty. Now I still may have empty attribute documentation, that's fine. We check it there. Of course now you say, well why would you check it here if... Uh, yeah, to be fair... Oop, I think I might want to get carried away there. So let's just then say something like... Um, something as we did before, so... If the attributes um, if it's empty, well, if it's not empty, go into some work else. Probably should put this as debug as well, to be honest. Uh, comment dot documentation. Okay, that sounds vaguely sensible. Um, it shouldn't really take us this long to do a trimming transform. <laughs> Probably over an hour by now. Yeah, an hour and seven minutes. Um, it's hard to believe that the actual run tripping was working quite fine. And the problem... Uh, this is silly trimming transform. But there you go. Okay, so... Addition is empty. Okay, that's much better now. Now you see the log file is now telling us what's going on. Um, before trimming, after trimming. Okay, so you can see here, this is actually what you would expect to see. So for example here, processing building error, and false, lots of spaces, no spaces. Okay, so all of this is very sensible. Now let's look at something a little bit more complicated. And that's exactly what one would want to see. Yeah, okay, th this is doing exactly the job. Okay, so I, th I think there's nothing particularly wrong with this. However, the tests are failing. So clearly we're not doing our job properly. The transform, however, seems to be fine. Yeah, the transform looks perfectly fine. So let's try to understand why it is that the transform is not sufficient to get this thing to work. Um, I wonder, so if we take one of these tests, um, and we look at the uh, door gen generator, I guess, model generator, let's have a look. Um, I wonder what the model generator, what transform this guy is calling. You just have to follow the path of transforms now. 
So this is calling a physical model production chain in the orchestration model. Well, we know for sure that our transform is executing at any rate, but uh, we just need to understand why it's not doing the right thing. So then we have a model set production chain. Okay, this is sounding good. And then the model set production chain is going to call the model production chain. The model production chain, hopefully, will have our chap, which is here. So that is also looking good. We didn't do something silly like supplying the model by reference or something like that. Um, Okay, it is by reference, sorry, that's correct. Hmm. That is very puzzling. Well, um, when this situation kind of happens, we have no option but to start tracing, so... Uh, let's try that. Um, for whatever reason, chose a physical model. Uh, I think here we could just say something such as... Trace, okay, cool. And we can just run dogen dot orchestration tests make it a little bit quicker so what the tracing will enable us to do is we'll enable us to see what's coming out of the codec transform um, just to see I mean I just can't for the life of me imagine how these spaces would get introduced again uh, Sounds rather implausible, but um, we're missing something very basic here. Right, so if we look for... Um, somewhere... Physical, if I'm not wrong. So test physical dot org. Okay, second of Jan, that sounds about right. Okay, now then. Um so there's the orchestration transform. Physical production. Okay, cool. So there we are. So what what comes out of the Kodak model? Mm, I guess any of these would do as you think. So what we'll do is just have a quick jq dot of this guy here. Right, and then we choose just any element we do, if I'm honest. Right, here we are. So there's the new line, okay? So that's immediately telling me something bad has happened here. So trimming, transform. So after trimming, what do we see? A new line. Okay. Ah, okay. Uh, we forgot to do the model itself, I think. Yeah, we forgot the model itself. Okay, first bug. Uh, easy enough. We just need to process the model. Uh, so, something like this. If m.comments.empty And here we can just do a trim of m dot comments. Um, false, perhaps. Oh, let's just copy this guy here. Actually, now that we don't need uh, not using templates anymore, we can go back to our defaulting approach. 
So if we know for sure that there's not going to be a need for a new line, might as well. Right, uh, model documentation is empty. Otherwise, trim the model. Okay, right, so this will solve the first problem. Uh, let's let's continue looking at the trace. So that explains why the model itself is not right. Now, let's look at the elements. Now we need to find an element with a comment. So we'll just keep going. Right, here we are. Yeah, that actually looks quite good. Very good, in fact. So the stuff that's coming out of uh, mo modulus the, the, the model itself, well, which, which actually, perhaps that is sufficient to explain all of our problems. Okay, fine. We may have just forgotten the model. Um, and the reason why we're seeing so much of it is because there's so many models. We have um, probably more than 100 models in the tests, which would explain why we see so many errors. In addition, I think there's also a bug in the way we detect the generation marker. And with those, we would have an explanation for all the problems, I think. Okay, as you can see, that solved 90% of the problems. And now, um, we just need to understand why the generation marker is not kicking in. Um, So what do we think? Uh, that? Ah, okay. Uh, just for a laugh. What is the signature of this contains? One wonders. input and the predicate that looks right so if the tag equals the stereotypes tag well we should not really guess one should just log So we we can see what's going on. Right. So uh, in fact, we could probably remove the tracing. I don't think this is helpful anymore. Now, let's think about this. Where would we expect this to manifest itself? It's not going to be in uh, this guy here. The C++ ref impl uh, org would do, perhaps. So any of these guys here, probably going to break. Right, so now then. So what happened there really, yet again, uh, it's a classic case of lack of concentration. We kept on assuming the problem was with every single element, when the reality was only with the models themselves, which was very obvious. And then we thought it was something to do with uh, the generation marker. Okay, here's some notes on those steps. Visual chaos. Okay, right, so now then, um, well, this is actually taking quite a while. How long is this taking? 49. Um, it's peculiar. 
This desk had slung down a little bit. Right, there we are. Um, now we don't particularly care about these logs anymore. We care about the actual logs. So, C++ ref import. Right, this guy here. Let's just have a quick grab. And then in here. So if I look for the stereotypes, decoration, license. Okay, a lot of stuff coming through, but no generation markers. Interesting. Is this test actually failing? Right, let's make sure we have a test that's definitely failing. So, LAM model. Um, let's say. This is definitely failing. Did we restart recording? We did. Okay, we're now in 21 minutes. Okay, so <laughs> it seems like the only thing we're going to cover in this video is going to be the moving of the transform back to codec model. Might have to have a, sus a subsequent video to talk about uh, other stuff. Um, okay, so there we are. Transform is failing. Let's look. for the trimming, log view it, and now let's look for the generation, no generation markets, okay, stereotypes, now that is very peculiar. not be coming through here. It's a reference. Hmm. Okay. Uh, another puzzling problem. You can see licenses and all sorts of other stuff coming through. Let's just look for generation markets. So. There is no generation marker. Okay. Uh, wow, this is very, very puzzling. So we definitely know that the LAM model test is failing. Let's just put this here so you can see what I'm doing. Right, so we'll just have to really, really think hard here. Ah, I wonder if not all LAM models are failing. Yes, that is the problem, isn't it? Um, no, that is incorrect. Even the org one is failing too. Okay, so that goes that theory. Um, okay, let's think about this for a second then. For whatever reason, we don't seem to be loading the generation marker. Now, I'm not quite sure why would that be. So I guess the first question to ask is, do we see any mention of the generation marker at all in this log file. Yeah, as you can see here, very obviously, there is a men an obvious mention of generation marker here. So what we'll do now is we'll just uh, view this guy again. So it seems to be the ca oh actually there's one thing we forgot okay right fine Whew, okay right so um, the problem is yeah okay got it um, there's always a trick right so there's two ways of supplying stereotypes um, and we're only checking for one of them which is fine for org mode but not for everything else so that, that's fine um, 
So on the E generation marker, we need to also say um, if E dot stereotypes. So if we just do a contains here. Right, so what we need to do is to make sure we check the stereotypes. Okay, what's going on here? Um. Okay, could it be that stereotypes in the codec model is something else? This is after processing, so... Um, right, so that's a list of stereotypes, but that's after processing. There is another... Well, I, I guess, I guess that's what we need to check, so there's no other way. So then let's just do something like this. Uh, for const auto by reference st on e dot stereotypes and then um, if st dot value contains return true um, and that I think will be the answer to our question and the idea here is that the model, the, the native codec was able to generate the stereotypes in the raw form so it didn't require metadata which then explains why it is that we're not finding it also explains why it is it doesn't quite explain why the org model was broken though ok so that didn't solve the problem Yeah, no, that didn't fix the problem. So uh, w the issue we're having at the moment is that we w we are not populating the stereotypes in where you'd expect them to be. Question is, where would it be? So tagged values would be a good place. Where else could it be? So we just have to go back to that log of ours and try to understand where this generation mark is being populated. Clearly is not where we'd expect them to be. Yeah, here we go. So it seems to me it's quite clearly on the stereotypes. That would imply we. Oops, I think we went a bit too far there. Let's open up the log file. Yes, yeah, so it's sad that we are wasting so much time. It's a good three hours, four hours job for something absolutely trivial. I'm afraid we might not be able to record much more because um, it's been coming a bit too expensive really. We already are now in 29 minutes. Right, there we are. So, um, well, as you can see here, it's quite clearly being read out. Well, I, I think something really strange is going on here. Something very strange. not clear to me why we're not seeing the generation marker in our processing. I mean, we should. It's 
not making any sense at all actually. So as you can clearly see here, we definitely have stereotypes, but the stereotypes seem to be skipping the generation marker. However, when we look at the log file, we can see that the generation marker is part of the stereotypes. It's almost like a, whatchamacallit, uh, Schrodinger's cat. Uh, so you see here, quite clearly, mass.codec.stereotypes. So the documentation trimming transform for some reason. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Now well, I think I know what's going on here. Okay, fine. Um, although having said that, if so, I thought I was going to say, I think the problem is to do with the where we placed this uh, transform. So if we go back to the documentation trimming transform. In fact, maybe Git will be more helpful here. So what we've done is we went to the um, model production chain, right? So the model production chain, and we added documentation trimming transform here. Now I'm wondering. I am wondering whether. Uh, let's have a quick look at how the references. So if I look at the model set production chain, let's just double check that the references and the target are all populated the same way. So there's a model production chain there. And that then returns Yeah, I think all the references will go exactly via the same transform. Which which would which would it, it is as if some references are not actually being processed correctly. Um which would explain why we're seeing this problem. So let's try to understand how references get processed. So we don't need a reference result though, we get the codec models. via this transform and the transform starts with a path we go to um, model production chain to that path the references references resolver and then we call transform which is ourselves, which then implies we must be going via that. So uh, I think that's fine. And also for good measure, what we'll do is... Right, so what we'll do is for good measure, we will just to make me at ease. Uh, let's go to the documentation trimming transform and let's just say... Um, transforming and then m.name.simple so if we just output the name of the model at the beginning of the log file and then let's run this again and then um, grab for trimming Right, so our explanation at the moment was, for whatever reason, not all references are going via the same pipeline, which would explain why we're not seeing the stereotypes. Now the best way to prove that will be to say, show me all the models that we are transforming. So if I now go over a quick look here, so you can clearly see we're transforming the lamb model, built-ins, stood model, boosts, mast, lamb, profiles. Right, I should think profiles should contain 
the generation marker. So now in the profiles, let's look for the elements in the profiles. So um, so that's the model. These are the attributes. So around here somewhere, we should start to see the generation marker. Well, one thing we can do for good measure is to just fire up die again and go to the profiles. So we're looking for something like basic. Right, so the documentation is empty, that's fine. But it should have attributes. And one of those attributes is message. Right, here we are, message, before trimming, after trimming, but no mention of the stereotypes. No mention of the stereotypes whatsoever. Now, we would have thought the stereotypes would be filled in. So, uh, let's just uh, add yet more debug. If we do something like processing stereotype st dot value, right? So we're kind of closing in. We now know that the references are being processed. We now know um, a lot of stuff, but we just don't understand why we're not latching onto the stereotypes. So just have to keep grabbing. Must be uh, close to the solution to the problem. And so it's basic. Ah, okay, something not quite right here. Could it just be that we're ignoring? Ah, we are. Right, okay. Uh, silly me. Right, so okay, two two bucks, two bucks. Okay, fine. Um, two bucks here. Okay, no problems, right? So this is goes to show how the expectations are not the same as the reality. So the first problem is we need to always compute the is generation marker regardless of whether the documentation is empty or not. Um, that has to always be computed. The second thing is we must also supply that to this guy and now we'll have an answer to our question this should now resolve the problem so as you can see there was nothing really particularly wrong with this the logic was over more or less overall was correct it was just it just required concentration really and we can't really concentrate while we are talking, so it tends to be rather expensive uh, in terms of time. So there we are, a solution to the problem. Now then, what we're going to do now is uh, let's make sure that we don't commit any of these logs to the tests. And we'll just do a quick cleanup and commit all this stuff. So uh, first thing we'll do is just to say... Um, codec main documentation trimming transform then we will say uh, this is just a cosmetic connect cosmetic changes to uh, include order in meta data transform 
and here we should say that quite logical use new um, document trimming transform right so that solves a few of our problems and then now we can for good measure go to models let's look at logical model right, this is not quite as easy as it used to be before but uh, logical Right, the logical model then, all we need to now do is to locate the document. Um, hmm. Document something transform. Documentation transform. Ah, oh, yeah, here we are. So, oops. Documentation transform. That's this guy here. Right, as you can see, the documentation transform is no longer needed, so we can just get rid of it. And we can just regenerate. And hopefully you can see that it's all been removed. Run all tests and hopefully this would get rid of the documentation transform. And we've got an hour and 41 minutes already. Now I, I'm just going to continue for a few more minutes and then I'm just going to see what happens now if you plug in the documentation transform. The trimming transform, should I say? So uh, let's just say uh, logical remove uh, legacy documentation transform. Right there we are. Uh, and now all we're going to do is we're going to plug in. So if I just look for that, uh, not the model side production chain, but the model production chain, perhaps. Yes, this guy here. Now, we just need to do something like, this is the thing we've actually been trying to do for the last few hours. We need to look for the model to model chain. And in the model to model chain, we have to say, actually, please also trim. Now, I'm, I'm not convinced this is the right way to do this, to be honest. If it's um, something as common, it seems to me we should probably have this in the same in a common chain, really. Not really very nice, but... Uh, and then, if we could... Right, so, um, if we... Um, it would be nice to get the right type. So, if we could, let's see if this compiles, um, It was const. Can't be const anymore. Now, if we did the right thing, then um, what we'll do is we will do an org to org conversion now, which may sound quite a crazy thing to do, but uh, it kind of makes sense. So, uh, converts org to org. No. Convert all to org. That's what I should have said. Convert all to org. That should be only one model. It does. And now, what do we get? Ah, now we have another problem. Right, still a spacing problem. Now we seem to have removed a bit too much. Right, so the problem now is this. Um, org is expecting us to have a trailing line, which kind of makes sense, um, because when you're coming out of diet, for example, you would have a trailing line. Um, but of course, after we've done what we just did, we removed the white space, and so now we have another problem. Um, now, I, I think, actually, we're going to probably stop the video here, because I think this requires a bit of thinking, because we, we, we're kind of oscillating at the moment with the white space. We need a, a proper approach for white space. I think it's fine to trim because we're basically saying there will be uh, some spaces that you're putting in. In fact, to be honest, I think in general we probably could get away with simply just putting an end line on the comment. Because we'd always trim when we read. Yeah, actually, to be honest, the fix is quite straightforward. Um, we just need the org mode converter 
hopefully you can't hear too much of the noise going on downstairs. So you can, you can imagine, model to org artifacts, at this point in time, is dumping the documentation into the contents. I think what we need to do is we need something slightly more intelligent, I think. As you can see here, in all these cases, we are just copying the documentation as it is. I wonder if we could just say we need a trailing new line in the contents, that's it. Now, there's all sorts of uh, hackery going on here. So I think what we really need to do is to say, right, so uh, we'll just do this in this video. Let's just say that there's a thing called uh, make text block for her, uh, for example, or oh, make, make block. Uh, what are the name of these things really? Uh, this is the org mode model. Dia. Let's go back to the very beginning. Um. Definitely need to put the name of the models in the comment, I think. Org mod documents, here we are. So what we're trying to do at the moment is we're trying to create a block. So uh, let's just have a make block. Um, to block, perhaps? Yeah, we'll just create a function here that's simple as um, create an org node block. And this function will be static org entities block. To block const Right, so let's do a few things here. So what does the block need? It will need um const string by reference content const uh, org entities block type and then const string by reference parameter. So we don't always need the parameter. So what we'll do is we will Let's make two incantations of this. Um, something like you could use defaults for this, to be honest. But uh, uh, for now, we we'll just go with that. Right. So this will be just after to headline. So now let's create a block here. So the general idea would be that we we just want a central place to create blocks instead of all these uh, different places that we have in the code. We we'll just go and copy one of the blocks. This would do. And in the block, we'll do something like this. So, block is our return. Uh, why don't we have a block type name?
So if we just take the block type BT and then we say, okay, right, this is where things become interesting. So we can't just take the contents and if we have content, contents, this is all getting a little bit silly, but uh, there we are. So we will just do something like um, to block contents bt comma empty something like this okay very simple um, and we just return this guy now this is all very straightforward and then what we're going to do first is we're just going to make sure right, if there's a parameter If there is a parameter, we just need to um, double check it's not empty. So if it's not empty, then we create the parameter. And we push it back. And then we return. Right, and now we will, before we do anything else, we will just very quickly make sure we haven't... This is equivalent, semantically equivalent to what we had before. So, um, this is a drawer, this is a block. So if we could just say something like almost, if I could type const auto b to block. Well, it should really be called make block or something, but there you are. Um, now I can't quite remember what we said. Probably something like content type. And in this particular case there are no parameters, so right, so all we're gonna try to do is to see and uh, perhaps we can make this a little bit neater. I don't really like multiple lines. Right, so this is probably all equivalent. And then now that we're doing this, I think we could just use block type, really. Okay. Right, now then. Okay. So, that seems simple enough. So let's just look for blocks. So again, same thing here. We are just taking the e.comment. This guy, we are taking the text block. And then we simply push back. So that's a text block, and we push back the block. So if I just call this TV, and we could measure this guy as well. Right, so uh, what else we got then? A whole load of blocks here. We look for block type, I suspect we find them all. Now, um, in here, you need to create the block. As you can see here, we're doing all sorts of things with the block. Um, so I think we're going to change this logic slightly. Let's just say something like this. Um, first, we get the contents whatever that is and then we are going to uh, create the block so all of these guys are greater blocks so uh, 
and uh, in this particular case we're trying to create a parameter so we'll supply it with a parameter okay and that will then be all of this and sadly I think we now have to push in each of these guys here so we'll just push here so all these guys will be very similar it's still a greater block the type is fundamental um, cost auto greater block type and then we just create a block type create a block type so similar greater block fundamental but I'm just push back and then finally on the else it's text block Now, this may seem like a lot of work, uh, but what this will enable us to do now is to change the contents in the single method. So, um, you can see now everybody is going by this method. So now if we just do a run all tests, make sure we didn't break anything. We don't really have a lot of tests and conversion, so I think it's probably not even covered by the tests. But I think we are reaching two hours already of the video. So tests are all green, so I'm going to go along with that. Um, like I said, I don't retrust really this test because I don't think we're testing this. So, uh, what we'll do instead is we will we'll convert all to org again, make sure that we are no worse than we were before you can see we are exactly where we were so that's fine and then we will just say um, um, codec add methods for the creation of blocks and here we could say um, codec trim white space I am converting model to model. Okay, so that's good. Now, um, now that we've done all the preparation work, let's go back to the two block. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to do the following. Um, you can imagine it's just really rather expensive ways of doing things around here but um, there you are so we always add the end line and the reason why we always add the end line is because we know the stuff coming in is always trimmed so they will always require a hand end line I should think and now we will just regenerate now we should if we run all tests nothing should break LSP is thinking Uh, goes according to plan, nothing should break and that running all tests. And now what we really are looking for is what happens to the org model after conversion. Okay, so that's good. And now if I just do another convert all, well let's just run. Okay. Now let's see. Ah, bingo, no differences. So as you can see, that's that's the problem solved now. Uh, so we can now round trip org mod models, and they generate exactly the same code because as you can see, there are no differences. So um, let's just say something like uh, add trailing new line to uh, org model generation. Okay, and now the rest of the exercise is going to be, uh, I'll just do it offline, but the rest of the exercise is going to be quite simple. We just need to go through every single model I mean, we just did this with the Dogen model, which is the simplest one. But we need to go through every single model and add the target, such as the 
the one we added here, uh, converting org to org. And then we need to regenerate all the models and see what the fallout is. But hopefully we will have no differences. So all this is done, it may sound very, like I said from the beginning of this video, it may sound very silly, but all this is done is it made sure that we can load an org model, convert it over to the dogen representation, and then output an org model, and there are no differences. And the reason why this is really important is because every time we want to make a modification to all the org models, instead of doing search and replace and so on, we could just change the code generator on the output side to generate what we expect to be the output, and then we can read that. It's almost like we're bootstrapping the change, sort of one at a time. So this will be quite quite useful for that sort of thing. Okay, so that's all for this video. I think I suspect that we probably will have another video, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but we shall try. Thanks for watching.